Hi hey everyone, in this video I want to show you how to make another lens. Uh, we've done some uh, lenses before on this channel, uh, so I just thought maybe I'll go and uh, just try again to make another one in case I'm going to use some different techniques. Uh, we're probably going to explore different shapes uh, than we did in, a be in before, but I just want to show you uh, that effect I'm working on. And specifically we will be recreating those spikes that uh, appears behind the ball and also the lenses in the end uh, so i think i'm using this effect for uh, for couple particle systems and i think uh, it, the usage of that texture is actually uh, more than one so i just want to show you uh, this is the main um, effect for those lenses uh, but then i thought i'm just gonna scale it in various uh, direction i'm gonna use it for this lens and for this one as well that happens uh, in the end of the effect so as you can see i've just got one texture and i'm using it in multiple uh, places and i thought it might be beneficial to show you how to make that texture in substance so you can start using uh, those kind of textures in your effects all right so let's jump into substance now okay so i'm gonna start with polygon node I want three sides and also I want to rotate it 90 degree. And next thing I want to do, I want to use a trapezoid, a trapezoid transform grayscale node, scale it at the top and at the bottom as well, because I just want this triangle to be a little bit more pointy. I'm going to disable the tiling on that node as well. And we end up with a kind of pointy triangle so I'm just gonna use transform and I'm gonna I want to reposition this here and maybe scale it down as well so it's somewhere in the middle not exactly on the middle but just you know having like a rough idea a rough position of this to be somewhere in the middle right the next thing is I'm gonna use a splatter circular plug this into pattern, pattern input one, change this to pattern input, uh, sorry, image input. Double click on that node. And first thing I wanna do, I actually wanna reduce the spread and I wanna rotate this as well. So I'm gonna use a ring rotation. I want this to be to 90 degree. And now I'm just gonna play with the scale just to add a bit more randomization to it. A little bit of randomization on Y, not too much. And now I'm just gonna increase its size. To maybe get something like uh, this. I think I'm gonna increase the spread because I kinda want this to spread a little bit, not too much, just a bit more. Okay, and I think the size random is a little bit too much on X. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more, maybe to Y, maybe 0.5. And increase the Y size so it's a bit more pointy. Right, the next thing is I'm going to use a slope blur uh, and shape as well. The shape, I want to go for this very blurry circle we get a little bit blur here although it's we're getting like a harsh line at the top so maybe before plugging this into slope I want to reposition this and drag it a little bit back down in here I'm gonna max the samples and just add a little bit of softness to that texture I wonder if maybe we could create like a hard line here before we plug this into this into the sloper. So I'm gonna use a blend. And I'm gonna use shape. And I'm gonna use transform so I can move that shape uh, whenever I want. I'm gonna use disk. Plug this in and maybe subtract. I'm gonna select the transform one. Sorry, gonna double click on the blend and click once on the transform. And now I can move it and decide what I actually want to cut. And I'm going to disable tiling on that transform node. 
so I end up with uh, this texture. And now I'm going to plug this into the slope and create this softness. Cool, the next thing is I want to actually subtract some random shapes from that um, texture we just created. So I'm going to use uh, this with this splatter circular. So I'm just going to copy and paste. However, in here, I just want to increase the spread up to one and I'm going to zero the rotation on the ring. Okay, now I'm just going to increase um, the spikes to be a bit more pointy. Add a bit more randomization to it. Uh, scale the radius down because I actually want them to touch the middle. And now I'm just going to increase its size and add a lot more uh, pattern amounts until we get something like uh, this. Very random shape. And I'm going to get rid of the tiling as well on that note. Now let's try to blend this with uh, our main texture using subtract. As you can see, we I think we get like really nice pointy shapes in here. But what I'm trying to do maybe um, I don't want to subtract that much. So I'm just going to go back to this splatter circular and maybe decrease the, uh, the size a little bit. So we get maybe something like uh, this. Right, the next step is I actually want this to be pointing a little bit uh, towards the top. So I'm gonna use trap side for this and stretch the top. Obviously I wanna disable the tiling. And now I'm just going to adjust a couple settings, trying to get like a really nice pointy shape uh, that comes from the middle. And next I'm going to use the slope blur with the same rounded blurry circle. And I think I want to use trap transform before I do that. And I want to scale it, uh, move it down a little bit so we can get a lot more out of this slope blur. Okay. I think it's spreading a little bit too much here. So let me go back to this trap so I can maybe stretch the bottom part a little bit more. And obviously, you can go. And below the default value one, which is max, we can go maybe 1.5, and we're getting like a, this nice shape. At least I prefer that one over the, the one we just had. Um, now it's a personal preference. Uh, you can warp it, or maybe you can keep it as it is. Let's see if actually warping it might be a good idea. So I'm just gonna grab one of those uh, uh, generators, run it through blur, cause uh, I don't want to have like a very hard edges for that warp we can uh, get some of the distortion on that texture. So maybe I'm just gonna add a little bit, like 0.25 maybe, 0. maybe 4. So we're getting a little bit distorted here. And the next thing I'm gonna use the splatter circular because I want those to go and move in the three directions. I'm gonna use image input, pattern amount, I'm gonna use three. And I'm gonna use the full scale and start scaling this up. I think the radius is way too much. And so we end up with something like uh, this. I think adding randomization might help uh, as well. And now we just need to tweak the size of it a little bit. And we end up with this shape. Um, I'm gonna scale it down because I wanna use another uh, slope blur on it. And disable the tiling. And now I'm gonna use this slope blur with the soft circle shape.
it would be nice also to have some glow around it so what we could do we could grab this uh, splatter circular oh, maybe, yes yes let's grab that one because i was thinking maybe we could use this one but let's use that one first and if it's not gonna work then we're just gonna use uh, that one instead i'm gonna run it through radial blur because i want just a little bit of that glow so i'm gonna use uh, maybe 0 0.5 and i'm gonna duplicate it and use the same value but with the minus so it will go in other direction i'm gonna blend those two together using add or maybe some different maybe max will work min no max seems to be better and now i'm gonna blend this in but this needs to be at the top because i want to manipulate the opacity and i'm gonna add this to our main texture and now we can decide how much glow we actually want for that texture obviously another thing uh, could be to use just simple blur and do the same so blend at the top in here and as an add or maybe max yeah max could work as well and now we can decide how much we actually want of that blur so i'm gonna maximize it for now and let's see if you can actually colorize it mm, so i'm gonna run it through a gradient map and i'm gonna use some very light bright yellow color but not like a full yellow but something that is a very desaturated yellow and i quite like uh, this or maybe it needs to be a little bit more saturated kind of like a golden shine as a lens and I'm just going to add glow in the end. I'm going to try to aim for this uh, a bit more yellowish color. Just to add a little bit of that glow to the texture. Like a very soft glow, as you can see. I think this works. So the only issues that we might have is that those shapes are actually very sharp. So what we could do, we could just run it through another blur right here or actually here so I'm gonna double click on this one and now I can manipulate that blur if I want to soften uh, those shapes a little bit I think something like this could work so um, yeah that's it for that uh, lens another lens uh, texture I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'd love to see what you can create with it. All right, thanks so much for watching.